All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 211 of the Kiss FQ podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. I was not forced to walk the plank at sea, and I am back with the boys. And I am joined by Marcus Almighty, Greetings. Mark, St. Louis Kiss Lonnie, What's up? and the voice of reason, 69th Blizzard Ken. Yeah, out of out of my casket, I got out of the casket. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm sitting on the fucking boat having to delete asshole comments from <laughs> YouTube. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. I'm not supposed to swear on the show anymore, and I've already ruined that. So five bucks. We're not supposed to swear on the show anymore? No. We have Worth the jar. We have a family audience. No. I'll have, I'll have to watch it. No, we do try and be respectful and uh, keep our language to an adult level. So before we get into the obvious, the very obvious topic today, just a couple of things. Got three copies of the Miami Gathering edition of the hardcover left. I just posted a link on the uh, on the FAQ message board. <laughs> yeah, could, why I couldn't think where for a minute. Uh, all it is, <laughs> it comes signed. It's got a little COA and a Shikara sticker. So if, if you want one of the last three of those, that's it for signed copies. I don't want to ever autograph anything again. Half the cruise. Um, <laughs> talking about books. And it, it comes up in uh, Paul Stanley's Q and A that he he did during the cruise is his new book. Who's typing? Sorry, Ken. Ken. <laughs> press press mute because I'm about to talk about Paul Stanley's book, and that is very important. And I don't want to annoy annoy Paul. All right, so he mentioned it during his Q&A that it's coming out on April the 30th, and the title is Backstage Pass, and I've just found some PR about it, which I just want to read quickly. Backstage Pass, due April the 30th, grants fans an all-access backstage pass into Paul's personal life and shows them how to pursue a royal rock and roll lifestyle of their own, offering hard-won advice and rules to live by from a rock and roll legend. <laughs> The book takes us deeper into his personal and home life on and off the stage, revealing what he eats, drinks, and does with his friends and family, um, and stuff he's learned from a lifetime as the front man oh of the iconic, iconic band Kiss, and how he brings his unique sensibility not only to his superstar music career, but to every area of his life. From the business to parenting to health and happiness, kitchen and the bar, to the gym and the office. Um. Wow, and that is why Paul was uh, posting photos on Instagram recently. So that book's it's two hundred fifty six pages via Harper One. You can go on Amazon and find it right now and read the rest of that blurb because uh, it includes recipes and mm. stuff mm. from the likes of Mario Batali. I thought he was still banned after the recent the recent Me Too movement, and the late Anthony Bourdain. Um. Oh boy. So, yeah, that's just uh, news of what's coming out. And of course, Ace has just reported that he is two thirds through, uh, no further regrets of his own. And mm. yes, he'll have a book <laughs> coming out soon. And Gene, of course, has his 27, not to be outdone. All right, so today's topic. Oh, but, well, actually, before we do that, you know, good work last week, guys, without me. You know, great show. Good response to it. Nice uh, job, guys. Sorry I bailed on you last night. No, no, one, no one missed okay. me. And uh, I kept you waiting for, like, four days before I could get an internet. I had to actually wait until I got home to be able to do anything. Once I was able to get a signal in Nassau, I couldn't do the right click. So I couldn't do anything with the audio on the uh, via the Mac to my PC. <laughs> Just... First world problems, man. So I just had a donut at Dunkin' Donuts in NASA, bought a Diet Coke and went back to the boat and caught up on some sleep while everyone went down the water slides in Atlantis. So uh, mm. good job, and thanks to everyone for watching and for giving some nice feedback to the guys. All right, so it is the cruise, and I'm just going to kind of let you guys have at it. I know Alex wants some questions answered. Lonnie probably wants some comparisons with his mm -hmm. cruise. Um, we're probably going to want to talk. Do we want to talk about the set list straight out of the bat and get? Yeah, let's talk set list. That's that's the that's the uh, 
just get, the elephant in the room. <laughs> just get rid of that one already. And I let's, let's put that out of its misery right away. I I did actually sit there the morning after typing up a very long review, which I have posted on Facebook. I've posted on the FAQ. Right. And I went into quite a bit of detail about it. And I, in the in the week I've had since then, I haven't really changed my opinion of that. I, I don't think I was trying to justify it to myself by saying <laughs> that we're supposed to be KISS fans who enjoy each one of the 20 songs that they performed. But... It is the Kiss Cruise, and it mm. has become accepted, expected that you're going to have some rarities. And Paul walking out on stage that night and saying, well, here's some stuff we've rehearsed that we're going to be doing on the tour is kind of a kick in the nuts, I think, to um, you mm -hmm. know, cruisers who are paying a very high premium for a special show. Now, don't get me wrong. Overall, it was a really enjoyable show. It was a check mark off my list of places to see Kiss. It was definitely a major check mark off my list of people to see Kiss with, you know, friends and people I've known for 25 mm -hmm. years online, meeting in person and going to a concert at sea to see Kiss wearing their new costumes, I think, for the first proper public performance. Um, am I pissed off that they didn't do The Elder from start to finish? Um, no, I'm not, because... They're just never going to do that, so I'm, I'm past that. But it would have been nice to, if they had even... I, I think we were sitting there going through the show going, now if they throw in a rarity now, they're going to really save the night. They're going to be heroes if they just throw in one now. Um, as song after song progressed, um, it was like, okay, when so, when's something unpredictable coming? When something surprising about to happen? And you're just kind of like waiting there, and then they dedicate... They, Paul gets ready and dedicates Shock Me to Ace, who's on the boat, and then has Tommy sing it, at which point... Ah, I, was I, that a kick in the nuts? I sat the fuck down. I, Good for you. And it's not that I don't like Tommy, and, and that I just need to keep stressing. Ace is on the boat, and that's his song. And you dedicate a performance of Shock Me to Ace, <laughs> and then proceed to play it, and not even have, like, Ace... And, and then Ace plays it later, properly. You know... It's, it was just mm. one of those things. So you get to the end and hide your heart thrown in there. Heaven's on fire, which I, I did actually enjoy hearing that again. Um, the sum total of the parts was very enjoyable. But you just get to the end and you're like, this is the cruise. This is not the end of the road tour. We are paying for the privilege mm. of being, of being, you know, guinea mm. pigs for your set and seeing what, if you're not near the mic when a certain yeah. sound happens and to point out. And as I did the mm -hmm. second night when I was uh, doing photography, you know, catching angles of Gene where his costume looked like a diaper, um, <clears throat> you know, to, to point out weaknesses in the show as they go into the proper tour as it starts in January. Mm -hmm. So it, it seemed a little bit almost nasty to say, all right, this is the cruise. You're our test subject. You're our captive victims. And you're, th this is what you're getting. You are going to listen to this show. You're going to like it. And, and you, well, I, I was happy Where after the song too. They, wait, they played deuce, you know, me, yeah. I, I'm happy and let me go rock and roll. So I was right. I, I was, if you know, only more people were like you, Julian. What? Oh, you're a lemming. You're a Julian lemming. <laughs> only more people were like you. Well, I, I'm. I mean that in the sense that if people were more like him in terms of being satisfied with just maybe a song or two, we wouldn't have this plethora of comments that are on the board afterwards. You know, because it's just like you said, Julian. Everybody on there, their principal comment was. This is the cruise. I thought we were supposed to get rarities on here. And that was everybody's big gripe. And I understand it because, you know, you, the, everybody goes in there now with that expectation. And KISS did that to themselves. They they kind of almost made it known that this is where we're going to be playing our more rarer songs. So when this happened, do you really blame people for being upset about it? I mean... No. And, yeah. and, and you know, what was the... I, I was sending updates out to the world on what the set was i mean were any of you watching live yeah, wondering yeah. what was going to happen mm -hmm. and what was your reaction i mean more importantly i'm at a kiss concert so i'm enjoying mm -hmm. i'm enjoying it for that i'm at a kiss concert and you're not and uh you know exactly. we can't we can't stream anything from it so i'm actually i am enjoying myself i'm having a yeah. great time it's you know a, a fantastic venue to be in it's very comfortable it's a great viewing position my seats were incredible um I had a guy who fell asleep in front of me actually as well so i didn't have someone blocking <laughs> 
me. When he actually sat down and he had a little nap. I have a picture of him. Um, you know, so I had I had a great seat. It was very comfortable. The the waitresses brought us, um, you know, drinks and they allowed us glass bottles, which is probably just as well they collected those. But uh, you know, <laughs> what what yeah. were you guys thinking as you watched that set list tick on by? I think Chris uh, since like Decibel Geek was uh, yeah. posting it as well. Yeah, um, I. I... I saw similarities, Julian, from the cruise you saw to the cruise that I saw in, in 2012, because I saw the one where they did all those monster songs. And I've been vocal on the show before that I was not impressed with the monster songs and uh, being put in the set. And, and it's fine. Don't get me wrong. It, it was great that they played those songs. It's a once in a lifetime thing. You're never, I'm never going to go to a Kiss show again where they're going to play five songs off a monster. I mean, it's never going to happen again. Um, but as I was sitting there watching the set list unfold, you know, they came. Well, I went to the second show and I watched the first show on, on the on the big screen that they that they have at the boat. And they came out and they did like I'm looking at the set list I saw versus the set list you saw here. And like they came out and they did Psycho Circus, Shout Out Loud, and then Hell or Hallelujah, and then Wall of Sound. And I'm thinking, okay, well, when are they going to throw in the rarities that I saw on Kiss Cruise One that made me want to come on Kiss Cruise Two? I mean. That's why that's why I want I was skeptical skeptical about going on Kiss Cruise One. I'm like, well, what are they really gonna do? Are they really gonna, you know, pull it back and and play all these rarities? And they did. So I'm like, man, I am going next year. That's awesome. And they played, you know, most of the the songs that weren't off a of monster were pretty much standards. You know, and I'm looking at here, I love it loud. Um, War Machine. Make it you know, make it you know, making love, that's cool. That's cool. Um, but Detroit Rock City, Calling Dr. Love, Love Gun, Black Diamond. I'm like, okay, well, all that's cool, but the the chunk of what they would have done for, for rarities, they did for Monster Song. You know, when you look at it, well, okay, you can play those Monster Songs, but then throw in the rarities, too, and you could have had a, a really standout set list that night, um, as far as the one that I went on. And as far as the one that you went on, I'm with you. I would I would have, I would have felt... I would have been one of these guys that was been that would have been very vocal about it. That um, the cruise hasn't gotten any cheaper since I went on it. It's only gotten more expensive as time has gone on. And they've Kiss has said for years. Well, you know, people always ask us to play these rarities. You know, when when at these arena shows. Well, the reason why you know B sides or B sides because they're not very good. If you want to hear that, go on the cruise. That's always been their answer. Whenever they do interviews, is if you want to hear something rare, go on the cruise. That's why we have the cruise. Um, mm -hmm. but that's not why we had the cruise this year. The reason why they had the cruise this year was for you guys to be test subjects for what they were going to do out on tour. I'm also, and that's, I'm going to tell you something else tour. as well, that there is also a very, um, and th this again, no offense is meant to anyone. This is just my impression that there are two different sorts of cruisers on this boat. they are actually diehards and there are, you know, there are people going to a kiss show and the cruise is the side benefit, but there are also the people who are going on a cruise, and the kiss stuff is just the side benefit. So oh yeah, that is completely mm -hmm. two different things. There are people on there who are actually happy with a generic set, and would one hundred percent right wouldn't know the difference between the rarities because they no. are not there for that. They they're just not that sort of fan. So and that yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, continue, yeah. please. Right. Yeah. That took I'm, me that, that took me by surprise when I saw it because they're doing they were doing um. Mr. Speed acoustically on the, on the one I saw and I'm singing the second verse where, you know, and getting on your, you know, you try please and getting on your knees, don't make it. And I'm singing that. And the lady next to me looks at me. She goes, that's the lyric to that. And I'm looking at her like, yeah, that's the lyric to Mr. Speed. What, what are you doing here? And then that's when I realized that, well, there's two different kinds of kiss fans on this, on this ship. There's kiss. There's the diehard people like me. There's the casual mm. kiss fans, and there's also the people that just don't know what to do with all the money that they have. So they're on the kiss cruise because it sounds like a fun thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. What would what would you say though the percentile of that would be, Julian? Like, do you think it's like fifty fifty or sixty forty or what? I have I have no idea. I I, I get the feeling <clears throat> that the diehards are even in a minority on the cruise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That it just strikes me as there are more people who are there for a cruise and a kiss show than they are for a 
rare catalog expansion because <clears throat> there there were you know some grumbles in the audience in 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 areas but you have to also remember that this is an audience i, I went to the night one show where the Argentine or the Central or South American fans went absolutely mental, uh, chanting Tommy and, you know, very much getting into just the general rock and roll nature of the show rather than, you know, where the hell's rock and roll hell or, you know, where something like I, where, you know, which is more the reason why I went is hoping to hear some rarely or never previously performed stuff yet and i don't want to get bogged down in the set list because again if you don't like every one of those songs turn in your card um it is what it is that's what they decided to play and well, I, I, well, I i was watching it on the thread and I, I saw it coming up on the message board and and after it was over i thought Man, that is disappointing. I said they couldn't throw in one. And I, I wrote one deep, deep cut. I mean, the I, the deep cut they threw in was Heavens on Fire. And, and I was like, what the heck, you know? You can't put in just one song, one extra little song. And as far as the people that go to these cruises, the people that don't care about us, they ain't going to care about the set list. It's not yeah. going to matter. It's it's, it's yeah. who, <laughs> Who cares? A good song is a good song. And they say Paul Stanley talks about, well, there's a B-side kind of thing. Well, gee, Beth was a B-side and that to Detroit Rock City or whatever it was and became the hit. I mean, it doesn't matter. A good song is a good song. That's why the, the, these Kiss fans like those other songs, because they're good songs. has nothing to do with being a hit. You know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I just, I just find it disappointing that they pulled this experiment on you guys uh, as far as their warm up for the the tour, and that I kind of just, you know, rubs me wrong. And this mm -hmm. is something else that I mentioned in my review that I've already published, and I, I stand by those words that it was a bait and switch, but we were bribed by having Ace Freely on the boat with the Gene Simmons band backing him, all of a sudden things become a lot clearer of what's gone on over the past few months. You know, having Ace paired up with that band was designed, in my opinion, to provide those rarities that Kiss were not going to perform and knew that they weren't going to perform. Having Bruce Gulick back on the boat to perform what it was, abs and you know, I was too tired that first night. Uh, by the way, you got on the boat, you had the Sail Away show, which was, and let's say this straight up, the Sail Away show was absolutely stunning. It was spectacular. It was incredible. It was like being there at the MTV filming in 1995 for me. Oh, it was on this, you know, whatever they call that deck, the, the pool deck with, you know, 2,500 hungry, excited, rabid Kiss fans ready for their cruise. And Paul came out and absolutely slayed it vocally. He sounded fantastic. He sounded powerful. The band was tight. And then they bring out Bruce Kulick. And Tommy stays on stage. And then they bring out Ace Frehley. And Tommy and Bruce stay on stage. I mean, holy shit. You've got all of that <laughs> happening. And then later uh, that night, I think you had the Ace show. I can't remember the schedule now. Yeah, you had Ace that night. Too. You had the first Ace set. And Ace comes out and he does Torpedo Girl. And Two Sides of the Coin. Um, oh, wait. He didn't do that that night. I don't remember. Dark I mean, he, he didn't do that. That was on the set list the first night, but it did not get performed. So, you know... Ace comes out and he slays. I mean, he's sloppy, but he, and that's not an excuse. That is Ace. Ace is not meticulous. Come on. No. He's... Come on. Come no, on. No, he's that's not. The, that's look. the kind of player he is. No, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to interfere with this for one second because I, I got to say something. These are not, like I said before, this is not dream theater songs. Okay. And the, the fact that he came up there and played as sloppy as he did with some of these songs I really had to do a, a hand to the forehead on some of this because it, it and it's like everybody said most of the songs he did he played really well but the ones that you could tell the new band kind of went come on Ace let's play this tonight let's play Save Your Love 
and he it stunk. Okay, it was he was terrible. No. He no. he missed lyrics. No. He, no. he screwed up stuff. Oh, oh no, and, no, 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 no. You know, oh, you, you know put, what? Put yourself, it's get not in the moment. No Mark, practice. No, he, yeah. look, look at get yeah look, get, on, get, get in the Let moment. Get in the my, moment. My point is this. If you're paying that much money to go on a cruise, okay, to see stuff like this played too, wouldn't it be nice for him to kind of take you into consideration, maybe practice the song once or twice before he goes up and plays it? I mean, the rest of the songs he played were, were decent, right? But if you're going to play, you pull out a new song, practice it. I mean, he said he just now on this interview that I saw from Sam Ash said, I don't need to rehearse and practice. What's bullshit? Of course you have to. Because if you don't practice, you play like you just did on the cruise. Terrible, you know? Okay. So come on. <laughs> Ace, Ace, co Ace comes on stage and he says, Act, I'm back. Yeah. And rips in to save your love. Holy crap. I mean, the moment, Mark. The moment. Yeah. Put yourself in the moment. No, it wasn't music. It doesn't perfect. have to be perfect. The, Not the, even close. The, like... intent, the intent was here. And here, here's a great story about that. I, I probably already <laughs> mentioned, but, um, you know, Ace, you know, told his band, I've had a vision. We've got to open up with Save Your Love. Their response is, have some more visions. You know, so <laughs> what what a, what a great way to open it up. I mean, Kiss, look at that set list that they did. For me, Love Her All I Can, Mainline, Flaming Youth, All the Way, in an acoustic set, Come On and Love Me, Domino, in an acoustic set, 2000 Man, in an acoustic set, that was a great set, though the acoustic one. I yeah, have to admit that is a yeah. great that is a great set list as well. That is fantastic. I can't think. I have zero complaints about anything in that. And Paul opening it up with you know let's start it with the one we start you know ninety five coming mm -hmm. home, which I've heard before, but I was like absolutely thrilled by that into plaster cast or hard luck woman. I mean that was absolutely perfect. And that, if anything, is part of the problem with the Kiss Electric set is they did such a great set. Mm -hmm for the acoustic stuff, but then they repeated stuff in the electric set that they'd already done acoustically, and that bugs the shit out of me. Rock and roll all night, hide your heart again, you know. And, you know, rock yeah. and roll all night, I guess you have to give a bit of a pass, but you know, hide your heart. That was better That was better acoustic as well. That was really good. <laughs> so Ace does his set, and you know, it was, in Mark, it was enjoyable. You just have to take my word. I was happy. I enjoyed it, okay? I really okay. did. Um, you know, as messy as it was, I was, you know, giggling like a schoolgirl. And by that point, I was fried. I was absolutely beat. I missed Bruce's first show. I was going to put on the TV and watch oh. it in my cabin, and I fell asleep. So, so good. So good. So yeah. good. Well, I, you know that there's like 90 different video cameras in that audience, and you're not actually <laughs> going to miss it. So yeah. there was just too much scheduled that first day. I mean, to have the acoustic sail away and then Ace and then Bruce – no, I, I I mean having Ace and Bruce in that whole thing was just too much, so I don't think. Uh, I I say I, I give Ace a pass <laughs> because he probably didn't have a lot of time, and I this is what I think too is he's so busy. I think trying to learn his solo album, seventy eight solo album, because he's got to have he's going to have to be doing that uh, December right seventh. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. That's the thing he better get right. I think when he does that whole album, um, I think he needs to get that solo album right. Um, this was, I, I guarantee he probably didn't practice those, you know, save your love or whatever, maybe just one time. <laughs> yeah. if, if that. I, I think that's about it. But I give him a pass for that. And like Julian said, you know, when you're there and in the moment, at least you're getting something of that that you never have gotten before. It's It's kind of cool still. All right, so that's day one. I mean, everyone here on YouTube and check out that uh, the Bruce set and Ace's set. And you know, everything's going to be up there. Um, I filmed most of Ace's, but my camera was giving me all sorts of aggravation. Day two, we're in uh, Key West, and I did not go ashore for that. I I actually I was hanging out with someone in the Irish uh, Irish pub watching the Detroit Rock City screening instead of going into Key West. <laughs> so <laughs> you haven't seen that enough. <laughs> right. Never seen that before. <laughs> that, well, it, let's put it this way. It was kind of playing in the background while we chatted. So, you know, right. but by, by the time you get through that, 
you know, there was just so much, again, going on. If you look at the schedules, and I, I think I put scans of these up on Facebook for people to see today, just how packed this whole thing was. I mean, that Thursday, well, the evening, you've got all these bands playing. Um, I did the Paul Stanley guitar that day. So that Q&A, which you can watch on uh, on YouTube... You know, that, that's a good 45 minutes. And then I think it was probably another 45 minutes waiting in line. I was the very last person because uh, they or they lined you up in order of your purchase. And I had been a very spur of the moment oh. one right towards the end of that. So I, I was number 17. And Paul took his time with people. And, you know, uh, even though it was very regimented and move you through the line, he'd been doing um, other things during the day. Um, so there were quite a few people there who'd bought other, other components that were, you know, uh, sorry, um, part of the whole, the whole thing. So the evening was just, I was dragged to the dead daisies. They're good. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Oh so yeah. I, I've never even watched <laughs> anything by the dead daisies. So, um, being suggested that I should watch this band, I, I was like, wow, they're fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Very entertaining. And, you know, probably another high point musically of this trip was some of these other bands that were on the, um, on the schedule. I mean, Wayland were on there, New Roses, Magnetico, Thunder Mother were fantastic, by the way. If you don't know them, check them out on YouTube. Very, very good. And then Tease, I think, was the other one. So, day two, Key West was nuts. And why don't we look at some of Alex's questions? Because I don't. I, I was going to ask you one of them, actually. All right, um, ask me so one. It, yeah. Is this so? After you explaining this, and I think he was he wrote this in one of his questions too. Was how was how would would you recommend people who haven't gone on a cruise yet to approach this? Would you actually take the schedule physically and kind of make like a little? scan of it and actually point out what you think you should go to or just wing it or i think it almost seems like you should probably go through the schedule and point out things that you want to attend and do it that way yeah there's so the much case? going on you have to plan it out you have to and mm -hmm. what they did do is they post the final schedule on the kiss cruise website um a week in advance i think it was the final mm -hmm. schedule was up and then you could actually highlight which ones you wanted to go to and generate your own personal schedule when they give you these things it actually folds into the size uh, and goes in your little pouch and i actually highlighted uh in sharpie the things i was most interested and i missed most of it but um yes. Um, the, some of those things that you go to or can go to, some of them cost money and some don't, right? Is no, that... the, the things that cost money are not on the schedule because you only yeah. find out about those, them uh, all right. because they, they have to be communicated, you know, confidentially so that there aren't lines of people showing up for things that they haven't paid for, getting in the way and interfering. So, um, the way you do your check-in for something, uh, you're, you're, it, again, it's communicated by email to the purchaser. Mm -hmm. If you've done the, say, the Paul Stanley guitar or one of the, them, they tell you where to show up to register for that event, at which time you'll be given a, a laminate um, and details of where to show up um, and a wrist thing to wear as well. So uh, okay. you are also asked quite politely, but firmly, don't tell anyone else where it is because yeah. you don't want it eating into your time by us having to deal with people who shouldn't yeah. be there. So You're it's, always screwing it's, yourself. Yeah, and they were okay. doing a lot of events. I mean, I went up to, to see Paul's art at one point. I said, I'm sorry, he's doing a private you know, event in there right now. I just popped my head over, you know, to look at what was going on. And Paul was trying to, you know, maybe sell some art to someone or someone had bought something. And it was a one-on-one -on -one time. So Gene was doing base things all the time. He wasn't just doing his vault. He, you know, you didn't really see these guys around the boat. I mean, I saw one member of KISS the whole time, and that was Tommy. And I missed my opportunity to get a, a photo with Tommy out of makeup, which just kills me because he was t he was talking with someone and obviously talking shop, so I wasn't going to interrupt him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think someone saw Gene uh, on occasion walking around, but they were busy. I mean, they were doing private, paid for stuff most of the time when they weren't performing. So it, it's not like there was any interaction with the fans to be perfectly blunt and that is one one of the things i'm going to call a major shortcoming on the kiss cruise is that there is so little interaction now unless you're doing a paid premium experience with these guys that you're mm -hmm. basically on a kiss cruise and you don't see kiss 
And I, my criticism is, is there should be Kiss TV on these fucking indoor TVs with Gene mm-hmm. and Paul yes. getting their asses on there and talking to everyone and at least making them feel, you know, instead you have Jess or someone from Sixthman going on uh, the mm-hmm. radio overhead. No, there should be a morning update from Paul Stanley. All right, campers. Okay, maybe not a great phrase, but, um, you know, here's what we have going on today. I'm going to be doing my cooking down in such and such. Don't forget, come on down and see. I'm going to be doing such and such you know announcing it or getting gene on there there's five days on the cruise there's four members of the band each band member should do like the kiss news at sea you know we we did get um these things uh kind of daily guides put in Mm -hmm. our our doors every day Mm -hmm. but they should be doing one on tv and they should be putting one on the big screens and you know throughout the day just play it on a loop you know um really? very very impersonal in that sense other than you know you're going to get your show with kiss and that's it you know you don't actually it's a kiss cruise where you b- barely see kiss this, this is yeah. the first year they'd had no pictures with kiss right yeah, yeah. were that's people right. complaining about that julian yeah a lot of people are very upset especially with it now being new costumes there was understanding about what yeah. an arduous yeah. process yeah. it is for the band but when you see that the time that it took to do the photos can be used selling five seven ten thousand dollar instruments you can see why it would be more appealing to not <laughs> no and i i think yeah, but that's, I get, that's where i get your point though. Understand. yes that, because you're yeah. on the kiss cruise you don't even get to meet the band Mm. You barely well, see. Well, then do photos. Then do photos without makeup. It's, if it's such a hassle to put on grief. the costumes to, to get your photo with the band, they've done put, they've done photos on the cruise without the makeup. Yeah, and then, the I understand best. we want to sell ten thousand dollar guitars and and whatever we can as often as we can. But you know what? There's people on that boat that that can't aff- that that are lucky they can afford to get on the boat, much less to pay an extra ten thousand dollars or an extra how I don't want to say ten thousand dollars because I know not everything's ten thousand dollars on there, but an extra couple grand to get a guitar or to get a bass or to get a vault you know some people on there that's that's what their budget calls for they don't have that much more to get the one-on-one time with gina paul but you know what let them meet the band let them get their picture taken with the band they are paying a decent amount of money between plane tickets to fly down there between hotels either the day before or the day after the cruise plus the cruise itself it's expensive to go yeah you know what i think it's not it's not for everybody and it's not for everybody so you know what let them meet the band one time. I mean, I get it. That, oh well, it's you know they're 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 older, or whatever. Then and they had a problem standing there last year that allowed the pictures. They they didn't even have the boots on because of whatever reasons. But then then let them meet you without the makeup in in, in blue jeans and t-shirts or or whatever. Nope. Yeah. You know, you're on the Kiss cruise. At least you at least get your picture taken with the band. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what? But I think you have a point because a, co- a couple of other things I've noticed recently is that. I've heard the similar kind of complaint about that too, about not being able to get a picture with the band just even casually. And uh, one guy I was talking to before actually mentioned this because he went on something called the, the Jericho Cruise, which is a wrestler, Chris Jericho. He had a cruise just recently on and it's a, it's a big wrestling thing. And they were people were talking how fantastic these events are because these guys are roaming around the place. You can take a picture with them anywhere around there. I know it's a bit of a different dynamic, but people really enjoy that kind of stuff. You know, being able to walk up to some guy that you see on TV wrestling and he's over on by the elevator and you can take a picture with him anytime you want, you know, and they've had all kinds of different events where people can just come up and pay like 20 bucks for an eight by 10 to take a picture with the wrestlers. It's people don't have that kind of money. Just like Lonnie said, not everybody has that kind of cash to do it. It was probably just a hard enough for them to come up with the money to go on the cruise itself, you know? Totally. So, so you know, you have to give these people a, a, a chance to go and, you know, have an, a t- little bit of time with you on there as well. Otherwise, they're never going to make that kind of sacrifice again to go and do that, I don't think. So they were seen out, you know, and about on occasion, you know, because there are photos conveniently um and obviously as i just mentioned i did pass tommy and you know i passed yeah. ace uh, but all the other talent was you know all over the boat i mean yeah. Doug kept bumping into doug aldrich you know mm. the boys from the gene simmons <laughs> band in the in the casino over here over there i mean they're like popping up you know and i haven't had a photo in a while oh there's a gene simmons band member you know marco mendoza right. and dean Casanova. you know they, 
they were all over the place, you know, as were probably some of the other bands who I weren't familiar with the people in them, you know, because there are a lot, a lot of long hairs on this, on this, when, uh, on this boat. When we went, Steven Adler's band played and he was all over the place the whole freaking time. And like the first night we met him, I got my picture taken with Steven Adler and he looks at Becky and he goes, he goes, do you want your picture taken with me too? And she goes, sure. So she gets her picture taken with Steven Adler and we walk away. She goes, who the hell was that? I go, it's Steven Adler. I go, Steven Adler. She goes, again, who is that? I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, so, so that is a little bit of a, a big deal and a pet peeve for me. And I th really think that, it, you know, on a, on kiss cruise nine, if they pre-recorded, you know, some segments with the band just to put over the TVs and into all the things that it would go a little bit more towards making it more of a personal kind of connection with Kiss, whose cruise this is, because you, most people I don't think are going to see them other than when they go to that one show uh, or the sail away. So, you know, and, and, and again, that that's not... A, a fact that's an opinion i may just not have been in the right places at the right time to see them they may have been out and about roaming you know a little bit i know that again you see paul on the deck with his kids you know you see pictures of them coming on board as well so you know again you're not getting photos with them you're barely seeing them unless you're paying for an instrument and they did a don't forget they did a lot of these things a lot of these events so that is where most of the scheduling yeah. went all right. How about another question from Alex? What's the process once you get there? Go to room safety lectures. Yeah, that's the process. You get on board. You go. Actually, your rooms aren't ready yet for the most part because they've just offloaded from the previous cruise, which I think was the Jericho cruise this year. Um, <laughs> and you go to the buffet and start the process of getting uh, food poisoning. Um, <laughs> no, the, on five pounds. The, the kiss. Bad, the, huh? the kiss crud. <laughs> The, the, buf <laughs> the, the buffet, you know, it was actually pretty good um, for what it was. I just never want to see any of those things offered ever again. It is the same every day, like <laughs> clockwork, that things change. And it just, it's not my... <laughs> Things don't change. No. <laughs> and then Alex, yes, one of the first things they do is the safety lecture, and it was very brief. It, you know, it was really... Um, Poseidon adventure like you know here's your flotation device and your assembly point and it would be like herding cats people didn't show up people showed up late you were waiting and you're waiting so um, and again you just pay attention to that uh, how does it work getting a spot for the sail away show mainly elbows and uh, you know <laughs> I don't bother trying to get up to the front. I just went and I ended up with Andy and his group, uh, which was suited me fine. Um, you just get any spot you can, and you're happy with it. I had a 10-foot monopod for my camera, so I didn't give a fuck. I was pay paying attention to where my video camera was above the crowd. So, All right, next. Thoughts. I'm posting my so are you going to go back, Julian? Are you going to go back next year? No. Is there a reason why? Yeah. Uh, right now, I, I feel I've done what I wanted to by going on the cruise. Um, it's oh, hor yeah. horrendously expensive when you take into account flying to Miami, staying in mm -hmm. Miami, especially when there's a, a gathering event beforehand, and then going on the cruise itself. And then there's all the extra upcharges that you get hit with while you're on there, which add, you know, in my case, uh, was, I think, $700 added Ooh. on after the fact on top of... It's a lot of beer. Uh, no, I it's not just that, and it's not just that. It's not just the beer. It's it's, it's the gratuity. Like, the gratuity that just added on immediately. I'm like, the, oh, this is fair. The gratuity is gratuitous, oh, and nice. the, yeah. none of that service was worth twenty two percent every single time you farted. I mean, mm -hmm. it was absolutely <laughs> insane just mm -hmm. what they're charging mm -hmm. you, and then they have the audacity to have an additional tip spot on the uh, on on the uh, on, on, on the, the bill every on time. The bill, so. Yeah, right. You know, you buy food packages, you can pay prepay a lot of that stuff, but you're still paying for it. I did it expensively. I did not want to share a cabin. And after I saw the size of the cabin, I'm really glad I didn't share a cabin <laughs> because there were up to four people in the same oh, size yeah. cabin as me. They pack oh. them in those little cabins. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't know how you fit everybody in there. 
Yeah, I saw one ca- uh, one group oh. of friends where I had three, and it was just like bed, 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 and there's no place there's to, no room to, to walk. Stop. Um, and then and then they open the door, and it's like <gasps> from the air in there, from everybody probably blowing farts all night in there and <laughs> snoring, and God knows what else. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you know the beds are uncomfortable. <laughs> Really bad. I I say no now because I I, I just can't imagine blowing that amount of coin again after what I've just had to pay for tickets for the end of the road. So I didn't decide to do this year's cruise until, you know, quite late in the process anyway. So when I I was offered a berth, I did take it. Right now I'm a no, but it's not a definitive no because the biggest and most important part of this whole cruise was the people and the friends Mm -hmm. and the number of people that i met are you know they were actually that part of things was better than the kiss component because the kiss part was so fleeting it was the one acoustic set and it was the one show and for me three songs in the for uh, the second show so it 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 very much is has to be more about other things than just about kiss um i have a question though for you that i was really actually curious about because you hung out like like you said with a lot of different people that you've known over the years and stuff Mm -hmm. like that like you know alan came on the cruise and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. there's a lot of diehard Kiss fans that, that we would know through the board and stuff like that. Yep. What was their reaction to the whole cruise? Like as you started talking to them, was it was there much disappointment and stuff? Were they actually satisfied with things? How what was their reaction? Yeah, like, what was like Alan and Andy's reaction like to the set list and, and things like that and, and guys that you, and like Nils and people like that? I don't want to speak to anyone else's opinions. Oh, no, you know. well, fine. Um, <laughs> that that that's you know, I had a very large beer tab. I mean, I can't remember. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, Alan had a bully, you know. Issue. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. He, yeah. He, he had challenges. Um, that's nonsense. Man, what's with that? That's terrible. That was odd reading that. Like, who would have thought that civil. would have happened? What's wrong with people? I was actually disappointed. I didn't bump into anyone I banned on the message board. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least that's or, hard to believe. That's hard they weren't going to let you know. Them. No one, <laughs> no one that told you that you banned him on the message. No, board. I, I, you know, I had a hilarious time from start to finish. I mean, it started out in Miami. I mean, my kiss cruise literally started out like a joke: a German, an Englishman, and an Aussie walk into a bar. I mean, that is how <laughs> that is how my cruise started, just like the start of a joke. And I mean, it was absolutely hilarious. You know. Miami and the gathering and I'll do a separate show with Andy to talk about the gathering but you know kudos to Joe Andy and everyone involved in that because that was an amazing absolutely amazing event and again I didn't stick around for Vinny I was uh you know they good move they no they facilitated a dealer table for me at very last moment so I was able to do the uh, the book thing and uh, mm-hmm. be up there with Ken uh, Mass Vashford doing the, his book and Lydia was along and I had Bob Kulik right next to me but we were so packed in as sardines and it was, felt so much like the station um, nightclub that I just needed at one point once I sold out I was out I was like I'm gone I, I haven't had any food in five hours I'm had two beers and a glass of water and all that time haven't been able to use a restroom i'm gone i'm back to the hotel and i will catch Vinny on mike brun's video and mike did not disappoint so thanks mike um you know i it it was to the point where you know i even missed my my photo before my fate i i just couldn't get out from behind the table um it was so so overpacked and jammed with people that um you know, it was a success, but uh, not something that uh, I particularly enjoyed as someone who has uh, claustrophobia and social anxiety. But, uh, you know, everything with this whole, like, week or, you know, maybe a little bit more than a week was just an overdose on KISS. And I found that I have limits to how much mm-hmm. KISS I can handle. Getting up in the morning and having that first cup of tea, and there's Paul Stanley doing uh, all night over the PA system on, you know, there's just, it was inescapable. Um, I got, and then getting sick the last night, you know, people started coming down with the cruise crud, and I, I was absolutely knocked out by it. I mean, I was up having dinner, and I was like, why am I dizzy? Why is the boat feeling like it's rocking more? And I I didn't know I was coming down with it at that point, but I was so sick by the next day, I was just done. So so would I do a cruise again? I really don't know. 
I, I say no, but especially knowing now that it's more than likely to never be a rare set list again. And if, yeah. if that's my one reason for going, that I really want to hear them do rare stuff, then I would not roll the dice on that. I might as well go to Vegas um, if I want to gamble. But if I want to see people again and the people who I've known again for so many decades that didn't go on this one, who might go next year, or many of the same ones who went this year, who might go again. And I'd love to have another stab at the, the Kiss trivia quiz that we kind of didn't do as well as we'd hoped but uh you know there there were so many fun things going on you were never short of conversations you know we even did a podcast you know with kiss talk with uh mike williams and joe polo in the middle of the of the the cruise so there, there was lots of activity there was never any kind of shortage of bumping into new people very tough to bump in make plans and meet up with people unless you had you know some technology but uh, it was kind of weird Let's see, what else do we hmm. have from Alex? What protocols you follow with interacting with band members of any band? Just be polite. <laughs> Buy Doug Aldrich a drink. Mm -hmm. Tell him. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's where I am about going back, about if I want to go back and do it again. Um, I was reading like the uh, the acoustic set list to my wife as after it came in. It's like, oh, look at this old oh, Domino. You know, that's cool. And they brought Bruce up, and they played Hydra Heart with Bruce, and they only brought Ace up. You know, and she can see how excited I, I give her trouble on the show, but you know, she's a good sport with. I know he goes to stuff with me. She was like, well, do you want to go next? Do you is that something you want to do next year? Do you want to go back and do that again? And I'm like, I don't know. I said it, it is expensive, and you know, we're going to spend a lot of money on end of the road, you know, tickets this year. We're going to spend a lot of money on Kiss this year anyway. And I said, I don't know. But at the same time, I'm kind of thinking about it, like, oh, it would be cool. And then I see, you know, the set list for, for the electric show. And I'm just like, you know what? Like Jillian said, if you're going to hear rare songs, it is a gamble, you know, because because they may you may get that and you may not get that. So it really is a gamble if if that's if that's why you're going, you know, well, it's how it is, yeah. It Before is it, was is, it is a toss. Not 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 every cruise. Four, you look at Kiss Cruise 4, was not a whole lot of rare stuff in there. Two, had all that monster stuff in there, was not a lot of quote-unquote rare stuff. But, but it's four, not like it every year. It really but, is truly not. But four wasn't for the alive one? No, four, four was the dress to kill one. Okay. But um, that's five the other thing. Alive, five was the alive one. That's the next one point. Five was the alive one. You play alive from start to finish. Well, that's okay. not really rare stuff. Okay, but but that's the thing though. The least though, then you had an idea of what you were getting into. You knew what you were gonna get if you were a book your ticket yeah. for five. You knew okay, if I want to hear this yeah. alive start to finish, well this is what I'm getting. But that's the thing I'm kinda curious about. What what do you think about now that they've already announced nine, you know? I, I'm starting to get the feeling that there's not going to be more of these kind of specialized things where they're going to say nine. We're going to focus on I don't know, crazy nights is going to be our f That's feature for that. Impossible. I'm just saying, just I'm just saying, just as an example, you know, just like it could be any album. It could be hotter sure. than hell or whatever. Sure. I'm, it just I'm no. guessing that they have kind of abandoned that sort of approach. You think or I think so. Yeah, I think they abandoned the theme album. I'm not. That set list was 20 songs, right? I, yeah. I mean, we may have just seen the, what the end of the road set list is. Essentially, oh, sure. especially when you think of the songs that weren't performed, Calling Dr. Love, Christine, 16, Firehouse, Strutter. They're your alternates right there. You know, So they could get up to 25 songs. They could keep it at 20 and swap in and out any four of those and you know, not do anything remotely interesting and keep it complete to the diehards and keep it completely, you know, uh, broadly appealing to the masses who probably won't be spending on tickets. So, I mean, that was the other big kick in the balls was the, the tickets going on sale. And then they, <laughs> and then they say they, they give us cruiser pre-sale codes mm -hmm. and doc in his Q and a said that they'd reserve the first three rows for cruisers. And I couldn't use mine. I couldn't use Wi-Fi in the Holiday Inn. It was blocked uh, because I guess too many people had used that one IP, so it would, had been uh, you know rejected. I couldn't use my phone, probably for the same reason off the cell towers locally. Couldn't use it. So I ended up having to buy platinum fucking tickets to try and get decent seats for the two shows that I wanted to go to, which you know again just adds horrendous unnecessary expense and then you're hearing about all these people who use their cruiser codes and got first fucking row at decent prices for the tour i'm like 
Well, fuck, again? Are you kidding me? I just get burned every single time anything happens. But fuck it, I'm going to Vancouver for opening night, and I didn't get to use any of my pre-sale codes, and that's just the way it seems to, to go for me. But I'll be there mm -hmm. first night, even though I know if this is the set that they perform, I'm good with it. I'm totally good with it. I, you go on the Vancouver and Sacramento, is that right? Vancouver and Sacramento, well, yeah. I was going to do well, all three, but I'm like, Paul, St Paul Stanley's voice is going to be very good three nights in a row, and I'm not going to drive from San Diego to Fresno to Sacramento. Sacramento, uh, it's a lot. Well, We're on the third still... night, Sacramento. Yeah. It's the third night of a three in a row, mm -hmm. so uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, but I will have done my meet and greet in Vancouver, so, uh, you know, first night out. He'll be he'll be well rested for that. Um, oh, assuming, yeah. assuming they don't, you know, do do too much stuff in promotion in advance. So, I mean, did you all get get tickets yet? So, I got Mem I got tickets for for Memphis. No, Mark I got Sacramento. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm I'm I have a plan for mine. So, um, I'm waiting. I'm Just waiting. Sneak in the back door. Mm. No, I I, yes. I have a plan. You have a you have a plan. You have a plan. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's not going to divulge. I hope this doesn't no, turn it's, into it's... an episode of a uh, police story or something. But no, 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 no. no, no, no. I mean, scout. I, I there's a few people around here that that I know that have that could have an in ongoing. So uh, and plus, if I even if I can't, if it doesn't pan out, I always enjoy going to concerts now alone by myself and finding a one-off ticket is easy here in toronto like i've never failed to like even a week before a concert to go online and just say okay i need one ticket boom right here that's good you know and i because you know what like i'm going there to watch the show i'm not going there really to you know hang out with people and stuff like that at that i do that usually with the people before the show at the bars beforehand like you know outside the the the, the concert hall right so and we found that it was a lot easier that way because because before we used to be like a bunch of us, like four or five of us that would go together, and we'd always try to find five seats in a row, and it was always death trying to do that, right? Okay. So we always just decided, you know what, let's just find our own damn seats. We'll meet, you know, meet up before at the bar, the you know, and then uh, doo -doo, and then we'll uh, end up meeting after the show and talking about it, and it's a lot easier. We we get better seats that way. And, you know, we're just there to watch during that time. Anyway, so I, I always hate it when you're at a concert and someone's screaming in your ear, that's awesome, isn't it? It's like, what? You know, you, you can't hear it that they're talking about anyway. Mark, you're an old man. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's my plan. Is that I'm just going to try it with my in and if it doesn't happen then I'll just get a single seat it's not a big deal I, I will I will go though obviously yeah and I expect there to be you know further legs of tours I mean Sacramento oh, yeah. is is way out for me I mean that's 100 miles uh, so that sucks but oh yeah it's a good distance I mean Memphis is four hours um, for me it, there there isn't anything within San Louis within four out with closer than four hour drive so I expect there to be another leg yeah. Obviously, I'm a, there's major there's major cities not on not on the itinerary. Indianapolis, St. Louis, Denver. There, there's a lot of major cities that aren't that aren't on that itinerary. They'll do another lake in the U.S. Yeah, something. for sure. Yeah, that's that's what people are thinking is they're gonna go. You know, that'll be a first stint. Then they'll go maybe Europe or who wherever, and then they'll come back. Yeah, to these other sites. I, I would. It would be great if they came back in the San Francisco area. Yeah, you, know, you got to keep bring, go around. You got to be keep bringing that sponge until it's dry. Well, I, I I hope so. I mean, I've been watching a few other podcasts, and uh, as we all know, uh, there's a. There, I'm I'm not sure uh, what his name is. I don't want to use his name that he uses on his podcast, Doctor Doo Doo. You know his name, Doctor uh, uh, Ralph. Yeah, Doctor F. He he Fook. he's saying on his podcast he's always saying that you know he's kind of concerned because nothing's really sold out yet you know and he goes this has been on sale now for a while and you know like Madison Square Garden he said still has has just barely about to sell out and he said a Los Angeles Forum is doing terrible for tickets so well, is, you know ho hopefully it'll pick up you know it's 2018 it's basically many years too late. So I don't expect it to pick up unless it's packaged with, 
you know, a, you know, something that brings in more asses into seats. I, I don't expect it to be a bomb, but it can never be like the f original farewell 96. tour or '96 again. I mean, it's yeah. just too many no. decades later. It, it's just right. a, a matter of reality, you know. But the, the thing, I guess, is, and I think the thing he's trying to get across is that because of that, do you think that they'll want to do a second leg if it doesn't sell that well? You know. Why they don't need to do anything? It's up to three years. They will do anything yeah. as long as it's economically and fiscally right. rewarding to them. If it's eighteen months and it's done, then it's eighteen months and it's done. I mean, if it's mm. not even that, if it's a psycho circus type tour because they've done so much touring in the years before, well, then they've been paid. They've they've mm -hmm. made money on these tours throughout the years, and if it's just kind of petered out, then that's what it is. They still are doing the end of the road and you can't make mm -hmm. people pay for tickets in a day and age where ticket prices are so fucking outrageous with all those yeah. again additional fees it's absolutely insane how much it costs to get mm -hmm. decent seats at a concert nowadays unless you're willing to basically have crap seats and oh, be in the nosebleeds in which case you can still go to the show for cheap but it's still a lot more expensive than it was and it's all the other costs of getting there, <clears throat> parking or public transport if it's not available, oh, yeah. and the risk of late night. You know, so it's why I don't go to shows. I think yeah. they're, but these tickets to me, there's a, it, they are selling pretty well. Uh, as I mean, it's surprising to me how many they sold agree. in some places. There's some places, yeah, that you know doesn't look too good, certain locations, but for the most part. I'm seeing, holy cow, there's some, a lot of tickets, which yeah. is surprising, good. actually, yeah. to me. And I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if next month, I mean, I think Paul or Gene mentioned during the, the cruise that they're going to do a private show next month, and that, you know, I think they, the forum had been rented to test out the pyro. Once you right. see some ads, once you see some visuals of them in new costumes with full fire and effects going, you know, then it makes it real. Then you've got something you could put on TV that's not a, a canned performance that doesn't look a appealing or, you know, something that's obviously, you know, being done to playback. And that we'll touch on that topic in a minute as well. Um, then it becomes more interesting. I don't expect to go to any show and not have it be pretty well packed, if not sold out. It's, I just don't think it's going to happen instantaneously. I think it's a bit of more of a slow burn these days for a band of this age. You know, people are like meh over Aerosmith as well. It's, it's just age, you know. Well, another on. thing, that, another thing that somebody brought up, which I thought was interesting, was, for example, you're going to Vancouver, right, for the first show, and a lot of people were mentioning online that they're almost tempted to wait to see footage from the first show to see what they're going to be bringing before they commit to the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because How different saying, well, is it going to be? Yeah, they're saying, oh, it's going to be so different and this and that. I don't know. I've heard that before. I'm going to wait and see what it's like from the first show. And then if it's like that, then I'll you know, be more diligent in getting my ticket, which I think is a risky way to do it. But I can understand people's dilemma with that. Hey, whatever, whatever works for you. You know, I'll go there because... Opening night, opening night. I, can, I can't wait to see your, any kind of photos from that that yeah. you'll put up, right? That's fun that you're going opening night. I mean, yeah. just, in, in, Canada. In, the day, in the days of knowing yeah. the set list is going to be. Yeah, Canada. You know what I mean? Well, that's that's exactly why. Because I want to be there for opening night. I did that for um, Psycho Circus. No one knew the set list then. You know, right. I had rumors of it. But um, just to be, you know, go somewhere. And they're so fucking nice in Canada. I mean, they're so nice you want to punch kittens. The library for I'm, Mark. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so nice. Um, but a couple things to touch on. Um, costumes. They look good. They looked absolutely fantastic in person. Even Tommy's uh, space dreidel, which I wasn't too sure about how it looked um, from the photos, looked great. Um, it looked comfortable. He moved well in it. Gene, except for the side view, well. Uh, Okay, Gene, maybe not so much, but Gene's front looked great. Uh, Paul's outfit is badass in person mm -hmm. and live on stage. Uh, excellent. Couldn't tell about Eric's, but, you know, he's the drummer, so you don't see much of him anyway behind the kit other than his uh, flailing arms. Um, playback. There's definitely some enhancement that was going on in that set. 
um, I, I know it had kind of been alluded to in the um, in and out Burger corporate gig that had been done the week prior, but there were so few uh, you know quality clips that you could kind of listen to. Uh, it was obvious that there was stuff going on. Um, am I going to call it Millie Vanilli playback or lip syncing? Hell no. I used the phrase in my review, Sonic Lube, that something is being oiled and massaged during that show in order to make primarily make Paul um, consistent. And it certainly worked. It was a much more enjoyable show through and through. And I'm not going to say that they were using tape because I don't know. But there were definitely enhancements. There were definitely areas where you could see Tommy's mouth counting off like they're playing to a click. Um, there are definitely some missed cues and there were other areas on off mic kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. again, sustains phases, phasings, um, and all that sort of stuff. Um, everyone's going to have a different opinion on what is acceptable when it comes to kiss in this day and age. I am of the mind of what it, it takes to get Paul Stanley <laughs> through the end of the road is okay. As long as it doesn't become egregious. And that means having a Milli Manili moment. Uh, you know, if there is just stuff that is being used to buttress his voice, a bit like they did in 88 or 92 when they had the keyboardist, uh, you know, with them on stage, plugging in those holes that occurred because of the performance back then was the excuse, then I'm okay with that. You guys have probably watched quite a bit of footage now from us. Ken, I mean, how are you with the kind of thought of maybe they are using sonic vitamins. No, I, th I think it's, I think it's necessary. Um, I, I'm not, I, I'd rather have it that way fixed up a little bit rather than you know, some croaking or whatever you want to call it going on uh, where it takes my focus off where I'm just constantly, you know, focusing on Expecting that one it. voice. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, if they're fixing it somehow, it makes it more enjoyable for me. And I'm just where I can take in the whole show concert and I don't have to focus on one thing. And it's just enjoying the whole song itself and everything going on and all the performances. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with it. <coughs> like, unless, unless you say like they do the uh, Millie Vanilli thing where it's really you know, blatant. Uh, it's like just over overbearing in that sense. But I think what they did were, you know, work pretty darn good. Uh, even in its early stages of trying to, you know, get the bugs out. So I'm okay. Yeah, and it wasn't perfect from start to finish because you still had Scratchy Paul in parts where they clearly aren't fit polishing everything. And Lonnie, what's your take? You know, it's, yeah, I'm with you. I'm okay with it because... In 2018, I'll take what I can get. Um, you know, I saw the Kiss Farewell Tour back in 2000, and I've taken every time that I've got to see them since then as as a bonus. And here we are, 18, going on 19 years later, and apparently I offended half of our team. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take what I can get. I mean, it, a lot of... A lot of other bands do things just like that. The one problem is, is that Kiss has been so vocal in years leading up to this that we don't do anything like that. What you're seeing here is four guys live, no enhancements. Well, you've gotten to the point now where you have to use the enhancements. So you kind of kind of have your foot in your mouth now because you were so vocal in years past about not using enhancements. But as long as I'm with you, as long as it doesn't get too out of control. I'm okay with them, you know, raising it a little bit to help the performance. Because you know what? I want to walk away from my last KISS show just as excited as I was when I walked away from my first KISS show. And I, and I, want to, I don't want to walk out of there the last time I see them and say, yeah, it's time. Yeah. I want to walk out of there. You know, I'm going. I'm going to Memphis with with my wife, and I think you know eventually they're going to add some second leg of this tour, and they'll come to St. Louis, and I want to go see them for the last time in St. Louis. The last time I I see them, I want it to be in St. Louis with my brother, the guy who turned me on to Kiss, and I want to walk out of there that night. The last time I see them, high five in him, 
you know, saying, you know what, that's just as kick ass as the first time we ever saw him. And just be excited about the band and not walk out of there thinking, look at, looking at each other going, yeah, it's time. They should have given it up years ago. I want to walk out of there excited. So, you know what, if it takes a little enhancements, fine. I really don't care. I want, I want the last Kiss shows I see to be very memorable. And if that's what it takes, I'm okay with it. I think they're on the right track in terms of those enhancements. Something that you did say, though, um, about talk, walking it back. Go and listen to the Gene Simmons vault from the uh, from the boat. The, the video of that is up. He does an excellent job walking back dope and his opinion on drugs. Um, so I don't doubt that he could do an equally wonderful tap dance when it came to, well, we didn't actually mean those sorts of tracks because, of course, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Gene can justify anything. Sure. Um, He's a good talker. And, and, and he's Gene Simmons and we're not. So, um, you know, Mark, Mark, what's your take on all of that before we wrap this? Well, I mean, I have no problem with it because I'm the one who suspected it was going to happen from the onset. I said from the very beginning when this tour was done that they were going to be doing tape. I was proven correct that they are and they will be doing it. And to me, quite frankly, I'm going to just echo what Lonnie said and what you said. As long as the show makes everybody happy... That's the main thing. That's why you do it, because you're paying huge money for these shows. And the last thing you want is to have Paul croaking and, you know, having an off night when you've paid that much money, because it, it's painful to have that happen, you know. And having seen throughout the years different circumstances where this has happened, where from Ozzy on the Osmosis Tour, having a guy backstage singing for him and having people... You know, I'm having sorry. his voice mixed in <laughs> for that. I mean, that's. That, I mean, I was I was there for that tour and I saw it firsthand mm. because I was side stage and saw it right, and I saw only Logan there sitting side stage singing along with Ozzy. So I, I, mm. this is something that's not new to me, you know. And also Rush, one of my favorite bands. One of my good friends showed me a really awesome trick where if you were if you find out the frequency of the of the uh, wireless pack that the guitar player is picking, if you pick it up on a stereo receiver, you can actually pick out how much of Alex Lyson was playing live of the guitar tracks during their show and how much of it was sampled on really? there. So, and even, yeah, even Rush themselves, they had needed stuff backed up because, come on, in a studio recording, you double and triple guitar tracks, you add things here and there, and one guitar player is not going to be able to recreate all that on stage, obviously, right? Sure. So this these kind of tricks are not new, you know? So uh, I I honestly say that this is not a big surprise that KISS is doing it. I'm just surprised it took them this long to do it because it was happening already for so long, this stuff, these little problems. So, you know, hey, like Lonnie said, if people walk out of there and say, that was a freaking awesome show, and that's the main thing, and that would be the justification for doing those kind of things. And on that note, oh yeah, they had good merch. Yay! Who oh, knows? nice. I did buy a t-shirt. I don't know what happened to the t-shirt that I was supposed to get free from Sixthman for uh, booking it. That never <laughs> seemed to appear anywhere, so I don't know why they'd ask me what size t-shirt I want. But, uh, okay, summary, it was wonderful. It was absolutely insanely fun. It was excellent. I, I really, you know, thoroughly enjoyed every aspect of being able to see Ace three times in, you know, a week. See Kiss three times in a week. Um, see Dead Daisies twice. Uh, you know, it, it's absolutely <laughs> amazing. See the same, see, you know, so many people. It really is an awesome experience. Um, didn't accomplish anything that I said I wanted to do, which was all this podcasting at sea. No did not happen um, um i had my my gear with me i did not record i just couldn't be bothered and people were all busy doing stuff you know everyone was in motion except as the illness started to hit and uh we're gonna i think probably be suffering from that for a while but you know it was money well spent i don't regret any of the money i spent for this trip i would recommend it if you're on the fence do it while you can you know, definitely yeah. get out there and give it a shot for Kiss Cruise 9. Get on the waiting list. Um, it can be very cliquey in, in some parts. There are people who are their eighth timers walking around like they're king of the world. Like, I'm the senior in high school and you're a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know, may not have been there for all eight. I got there as soon as I could. Um, 
<laughs> you know, so there's that kind of uh, people who know they're ex- exactly set up with how they're going to cruise, and they're very set in their ways. And if, an elitist if, attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. If that's what it takes them to get through the day, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not built that way, so I two fucks I could not give um, other than just... curse on this show. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah okay that hey, other, that, 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 other that other show is dr fuck right there you go, yeah, there oh! you go. So. <laughs> all right so there we are that's uh in essence i'll probably have more thoughts of this as we go hopefully uh andy's going to be well soon so we can do a recap of the gathering and uh more on that because there's a lot more to discuss on that but you know for now thank you guys for joining me for me to just go over all this all this stuff again it was uh, it was fun, but I, I was so happy to get home. I, I was fried, and I said I didn't want to listen to any kiss for a while, but it didn't happen. I couldn't help yourself, could you? Could not help myself. I didn't want to, didn't want to, but I have no choice. All right, so we will uh, be back next week, and I think uh, you know we'll probably be talking about the end of the road and everything that's going to start happening as we lead into January. So uh, for now, from Ken. From Mark, from Lonnie, myself, thanks for watching or listening, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.